And Glenn, um, authorities say have not released a motive in this shooting or details on that alleged shooter, but we are getting a closer look at some of the chaos that unfolded inside that restaurant when that gunman opened fire. It's the last place patrons say they expected to come face to face with a gunman. This upscale restaurant in the heart of Beverly Hills that erupted with the sound of gunfire as customers were dining Monday night. Four consecutive shots go off. Everybody's scrambling. People are screaming. We run to the back of the kitchen. Man, I hope nobody ever goes through that. Beverly Hills PD arrested this man after the shooting, but haven't provided any details on that individual. It's unclear if he's a suspect who shot this customer who was dining inside the steakhouse. Authorities confirm that victim was last listed in stable condition. The entrance of this bank right across the street from the restaurant was damaged after a bullet shattered the glass. Right along the sidewalk near that location, authorities collected a bullet casing for potential evidence in this case. Meantime, those who live and work in this community say the shooting has shattered their sense of security. Christine and Alex, what's scary is how blatant these men were doing this in the middle of the afternoon in front of dozens of witnesses and cameras. The man who they were targeting told me that he saw them walk by and he had this overwhelming feeling that something bad was about to happen. So he says at least he was ready. It happened that fast on March 4th at about 2 p.m. at El Pastayo restaurant on Cannon and Brighton in Beverly Hills. Investigators say a group of gang members target a man dining in this watch, a $500,000 Richard Mill timepiece. The man wearing it says they put him in a headlock, repeatedly hitting him in the head with the gun. Detectives say the gunman fired twice, hitting this woman at another table in her leg. The three thieves took off and into a getaway BMW. Uh, this robbery was the definition of bold and brazen, uh, occurring on one of the busiest intersections uh, in the city of Beverly Hills, if not in the county of Los Angeles. And with the help of the FBI, they've arrested three of the five involved, 18-year-old Kai McGee, 30-year-old Marquise Gordon, and 20-year-old Malik Powell, each facing up to 20 years in prison. From witness interviews to DNA evidence to uh, CCTV surveillance cameras, and they were able to put a case together and, and identify the subjects. The bad guys were caught on camera scouring the sidewalk for their target right before the incident. Uh, Beverly Hills police say these robberies, these crimes are just getting out of hand. There have been two robberies at high-end retailers in Beverly Hills so far this week. The concern that there may be more. The most recent happened here at the Louis Vuitton on Rodeo Drive. Police say two men walked inside the store yesterday afternoon around 1.30 p.m. They grabbed a jacket and then pushed past a security guard and ran out. One suspect was caught near the store and the other was detained by private security contractors about a block away. They were charged with grand theft and police say there was no damage to the store and the stolen merchandise was recovered. But of course, this is concerning because Yesterday's incident came just a few days after a robbery that happened next door to the Louis Vuitton at the luxury fashion store Fendi. Police say it happened on Monday. Five men stole thousands of dollars worth of merchandise from that store and assaulted a security guard before escaping in a getaway car. Police arrested all suspects after a pursuit that ended in the Windsor Hills area. All of the stolen merchandise and a loaded handgun were recovered. Just last week, you may remember this one here. Officers responded to a brazen smash and grab burglary at a jewelry store on South Beverly Drive. Investigators said five people got out of a car, used a, what appeared to be sledgehammers to break the plate glass window. The store owner told us the thieves stole half million dollar necklace and several high end watches before escaping in a second car. Whew, man. No suspect. man, 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 oh man. Um, I have a few questions for society in general. Anybody that might watch this video, I have a question for you. When did America become this grand theft auto society? And who is committing these types of crimes? I, I just can't imagine being in Beverly Hills as a tourist, um, trying to just have lunch al fresco out on the patio, and you have a bunch of uh, grizzly bears just out there hunting and looking for picnic baskets. I can't imagine 
having to be on edge 24 seven. If I see a group of suspicious people, you know, I have to, I have to think about it. Can, should I let my guard down? What, what is going on with some of the subculture in the black community? So now it has spilled out into Beverly Hills, it's spilled out into Santa Monica, it's spilled out into the Grove. You almost can't go anywhere anymore. And the fact that things are just so flagrant and random, black people have fucked up Melrose, they've had crimes over there. If you look at anywhere where black people go, they have ruined it. I, I, and I know that sounds really horrible. Um, my first example I saw of this was there was a, a higher end cheesecake factory that opened at the Beverly Center. The name of it was the Grand Lux. And I remember going there and I just saw a bunch of Tyrones, a bunch of Lakeishas hanging out. And uh, again, I don't know what affected their bottom line, but I just remember when I first went there, again, I will continue to say this, by the time black people find out about something, it's too late. When I would go to the Grand Lux, um, I would look around and just see, hmm, okay. Houston's, okay, nah, it was, it was good in the beginning. Eh, kinda, kinda changed a little bit, kinda changed a little bit over the years. These are the first people complaining about why they don't have anything in their community, why we can't have anything, why are people targeting us, why do people why are people following us up and down the aisles? Why is we ain't got no we ain't got nothing to do? We's got nothing in our communities. They rubbing the knees, they're sitting on the porch, they scratching their head, they don't know what's happening, time's passing them by. Why is we don't have nothing? They they just they just don't know what to do. We don't have nothing. I go booga, 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 just talking. They have nothing to do, nothing to offer. And all they can come up with is to come to communities, people that have maybe born into affluence, born into wealth, and I'm going to steal from them. You can see this story right here where this guy got his, he had a $500,000 watch stolen. Now, you have three individuals that were caught, stole a $500,000 watch, so they didn't even get away with it because it got caught. What, in fact, were they going to do with this watch? Did they think they were going to take it to the local pawn shop? Who, they didn't think this, this watch is probably so rare, maybe it has a serial number. The amount of nerves it takes to steal something. Um, anyway. I'm going on a rant here. This is Mike for Flew the Coop. Until the next video, peace.